Well, um, very excited about uh, obviously the way we uh, ended up and uh, since the time we left you in uh, Indianapolis had a lot of great things happening and kind of because of the championship weekend it's been a very unusual um, month of December and then last week following uh, our uh, popping out to Orlando with Monty and then into New York as well, as well as having one of our busiest banquet weekends here and, and recruiting weekends and trying to balance pra uh, practice. It's been a very uh, unique experience. I've got my legs back under us this week. We'll actually start uh, Oregon prep on Friday. Um, unfortunately for us at Wisconsin, we actually have uh, the start of finals on Saturday, so to balance uh, finals as well as trying to get in as many practices in preparation for Oregon before we leave on the 26th is uh, a very unique challenge, but I think I think our guys are, are are locked into. You can see they've been doing some conditioning drills. They've actually done conditioning uh, all the last week and this week uh, with with Coach Herbert uh, to to make sure that they're um, physically ready to play. So, uh, from a um, injury standpoint, uh, Pete Cons uh, um, hopefully will be able to start to return to practice uh, next week. Uh, won't use him yet this weekend. We're kind of gathering some information from him as well as uh, getting a second opinion out there for for him because he's got a lot out there not only obviously in the next couple of weeks with us but also for a future decision so um, that's really the only guy that uh, other than the obvious ones that haven't been with us all year that won't be involved in the in the game plan and the preparation for Oregon so with that open it up for questions what are some of the challenges with a shorter prep time? well um, kind of just what you said uh, Tom my coaches um, also are on the road this week recruiting I only let them out on Tuesday Wednesday Thursday I kept them in uh, from Friday Saturday Sunday Monday um, so to balance that little uh, thing I'm sure you read about Ohio State, it's always a balance that you have to have with being able to go out on the road and being able to stay at home and prep your guys. So it's, it's something that good teams have to struggle with. Um, uh, there's a lot of film out there in Oregon, obviously, uh, to play their full uh, slate. You know, you want to watch the games that are kind of similar to you on offense, defense, and special teams. There's such a unique preparation in, in really the special teams phase and offense and defense as well. So um, balancing all that together is probably the hardest thing. Well, the obvious one uh, for our offense, everybody's going to point to Stanford, um, a little bit of LSU, and then kind of a sprinkling in there of some other schools, especially, uh, you know, with our one-back uh, system, you know, when we're in 11 personnel and, and some of the different looks we lose, use with 12. I think on defense, uh, the ones that will jump out to you, uh, USC, a um, little bit of Washington, Arizona State, um, you know, different, different things along that line that um, you just want to schematically have similar team, same teams as much as possible. On defense? On defense, what do you think of the matchup? Well, uh, you know, um, I think they're two edge players, uh, both, what is it, 96 and 56, I believe, are very, very talented. Their safeties are very aggressive. Um, uh, they're, they're a team that likes to move a lot and, and do different things, you know, that uh, present your, your own problems. Um, but, you know, it, it's, uh, it's, it's definitely something you, um, unique to us. You know, I can't really say they're like, there's, there's bits and pieces that you take similar to some of the teams in the Big Ten, but not a team you can wholesale sell that to and then uh, on the flip side of it you, you know um, their offense is very very unique in what they do and the speed that they play in so it's going to be a challenge on, on all three phases. How concerning is that to have a face that particular kind of defense? Well you have at times they're, they're, they have a you know kind of different phases uh, their, their normal no huddle is a very fast paced up tempo and then they got a, an extremely quick one where you can really see they've caught uh, not only defenses, but also referees offside, uh, you know, in, in difficult situations. And, um, and then they do different things uh, within the phase of the game where they'll actually do what most no huddle teams will do, you know, adjust to what your look is, audibleize at the line of scrimmage, and make another play. Well, the great thing is um, there is a rule in college football, and you can see it get used by certain teams that they play against, that if they sub, you have an opportunity to sub as well. Um, but you just got to make sure the officials are on the same page with you. And, and obviously, we'll have neutral officials, so you just got to make sure that it all kind of works together. Uh, but it's something that we'll make them aware of as we try our preparation, make sure we got the right answers. Is there anything you maybe didn't like about last year's bowl preparation that you changed it all this year? Um, no, I think uh, just as a head coach, one of the things I pride myself on is trying to gather as much information uh, you know, about teams that have success. So we, we, I asked and, and talked to several coaches uh, during the out of season to get their bowl prep itinerary. A lot of people are always wanting ours, um, you know, for, for the success we've had at other places. So um, nothing really uh, jumped out to us. I mean, we played the number two team in the country to a two-point game. I mean, I get it, we lost the game, but I, I, don't, I didn't like the way we started the game. So, I mean, that's going to be a huge point of emphasis um, and, and some of the uh, other little finer points during the course of the game, but nothing really impressed. 
two big blinds. Do, do teams, do opponents generally then say, identify that guy and film and say, okay, he's got his guy? I think kickoff coverage for sure, Jeff. Um, you know, it's probably a little bit more difficult on like a punt return or a kick return scheme, but kickoff coverage, if you've got a guy that's making plays, uh, you're definitely going to find out where he is and uh, try to game plan accordingly. Yeah, I, I mean, every year I get transfer requests. Um, and I think anytime you're a program that has success, you're going to naturally get that. You get them in twofold. First off, you get them from kids that you formerly recruited, that maybe they're at someplace else, that maybe that all that glittered and was gold when they were recruiting isn't really a reality now, and, and you get them reaching out to you. Um, so that's one way. And then also, it's just like you're talking about, I think because of uh, Russell's success and the, and, and the ease in which it happened, um, I'd be lying to you to tell you if it, you know, people haven't inquired about that same a type of scenario, not just at quarterback, but at other positions as well. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I, I told Russell during the recruiting process, I knew we were battling us in Auburn, and I said, how are you going to go beat that performance? I mean, the guy won the national championship and won the Heisman, and uh, here you're going to have an opportunity to work to do those things. So, yeah, I, I get it. Um, I, I suppose there is a point and counterpoint to everything. Yeah. Does any of that, do you think, work in your advantage this year in, in keeping that edge? Well, I think, you know, one of the arguments uh, over the last several years is the Big Ten needs to play a championship game so that they keep playing so they play better in a bowl game. So well, we're going to see how that comes to tuition, you know. Um, I, I do like the fact that there isn't much of a lull here. Like in the past, uh, I really uh, spent the first two weeks of bowl prep good, good. Um, Wisconsin just playing Wisconsin. We didn't worry about, you know, the, the prep of TCU or the year before that or the year before that. Whereas this, now we had last weekend, it was really good, good. Uh, we did some good developmental work, but we'll start popping into Oregon right away on Friday and, and see how that moves us forward. So that's a little bit different. Not that you didn't enjoy playing TCU last year, but the fact that it's Pac-12, Big Ten, that sort of thing, does that help with guys' attention, enjoyment, whatever, focus on this game? Um, I think our guys respected TCU last year. Uh, but I do, I do know that you know as soon as it was announced, or actually in our locker room, once we, we won the game, we knew we were going to be playing Oregon. We just had to go through with a few technicalities, but I know they were very excited and uh, I've been a big fan of Chips, uh, known him now for a, you know, three, four years and r really excited about an opportunity to play a game against him and it's really two different, totally different offensive philosophies um, that, that are uh, going out there on the field and, and both of them will have an effect on the game, you know, whether we can maintain the ball or obviously how fast they quickly can move and if they can have success that way. Uh, I remember uh, Kevin Zeitler, uh, this was back when head coaches were allowed to go on the road in spring recruiting, and I remember watching him uh, perform a workout, and uh, Bo was really high on him. Um, you know, he's not as tall as Bo wanted necessarily, so I was kind of curious because he intrigued Bo so much, and he just, his flexibility, and, his, and then you hear people talk about his work ethic, his attitude, and coaches are always very complimentary in high school. I mean, Coach Denard had done unbelievable job where he's at and he bragged about Kevin and, and uh, but you know he played in a wing T system he hadn't really passed pro ever you didn't know exactly what you're getting he caught fire there in recruiting all of a sudden Michigan was that's Michigan's old staff was all over him and uh, you know basically everybody in the Midwest so I'll never forget Kevin coming in and, and I've shared with you some of the stories about him in his first years but to come full cycle now and uh, to, to have one more game with him and just he, he prepares as well as anybody I just he about ran me over on, on the elevator walking down here. He's like, Coach, I'm just going to get a half hour in. we got a team meeting at 530. Yeah, so, I'm like, good, Kevin. Uh, you know, and, and that's just him. Um, and then Peter Kahn's, you know, Pete probably, uh, same kind of story but, but different. He, a kid we offered early, early on, you know, him and Margaret, his mom, it's kind of just them. And I knew it was their decision process. And I knew Margaret wanted him here, but she wasn't going to make him. Uh, so I really uh, played up to mom about, hey, let's just, you know, maybe put a carrot in front of him. So she said that if he committed Wisconsin or when he commits, she'd take him on a trip, you know, maybe a cruise or something. Um, so I kept pushing that element. And uh, I don't know if they ever took that cruise, uh, but I, I know it was a, a, a just kind of fun to watch him grow. Um, and, you know, he's, he's a kid that uh, is going to have an opportunity here. You know, we're going to get information back from the NFL. And, um, you know, he's got a lot of big things in front of him. Whenever they happen, he's going to be a great player. How will you see 
be like trying to run twice as fast play in you know, like two and maybe normally run one? Absolutely. Um, during that segment, but again, I think it's important to realize you have three different, you know, kind of different tempos. So, um, it, multiple scout team, you know, just like we have for every other uh, no huddle, but um, you know, even have the added emphasis. And I think it's going to be good because now it's a multi-week preparation. Our scouts will get better at it, uh, which hopefully when we go down there to Pasadena, now we, we, we would have had an actual eight bowl prep uh, of Oregon and really snap our guys into that tempo and um, the conditioning needed to do it. You mentioned Con about maybe having some things to think about longer term than just this game in a couple weeks. What to you is most important in your presentation to Cons and others who might be having a decision? Well, uh, it's just Cons and Monty. Uh, you know, they, we filled out the paperwork. Um, it's kind of like we've been uh, ever since I've been here. We'll fill out the paperwork. We'll get them the information. I'll reach out to different um, personnel in the league uh, that I've developed relationships with. And fortunately for them and me now, uh, being in this position uh, in my sixth year, you, you do know a lot. Of, I mean, we've had a lot of GMs through. A lot of the guys that are in the room on draft day uh, f feel very highly about this program and the way we do things and want to give us good information. Um, I don't think I had that comfort or that flexibility maybe in my first couple of years. So um, what I try to give them is, you know, scouts and the agents are, you know, bottom line, if you sign with an agent, the one thing they're doing from the day you sign with, they're trying to take your money. That's what it is. And, and to make kids realize that you're not working for an agent, the agent is working for you, that's the hardest obstacle to overcome um, because a lot of agents out there are going to say, hey, you're going to be a first rounder, when in reality the NFL says you're going to be a third rounder because they want to get you and they want to get making your money. Um, so that's the hard thing to, to make sure that they know. And a great thing for Monty, uh, his mom and dad are, are, are well in tune with the process. Margaret, uh, Pete's mom, we've had several conversations with, and hopefully we can all be a kind of a grounding effort. Uh, and if they're first rounders, I'll be the first to you know, pat them on the back and wish them good luck because, I mean, that's a, that's a dream come true. Yeah, um, those three um, are all invited to the Senior Bowl. Um, when you're invited to the Senior Bowl, that's basically an indication that you're going to be invited to the uh, uh, Combine and you're, you're, you're thought of in a very uh, favorable uh, position in the NFL draft. Uh, I, I think Kevin's right up there with probably a couple uh, interior linemen in the world of college football that will be uh, drafted. I think the neat thing for Russell is obviously uh, the University of Wisconsin and all of us Wisconsin fans have joined enjoyed a lot because of Russell being here, but he's probably going to be the biggest benefactor because he was playing in a system where he was kind of the show and the spread, and now he's, the, he's shown how well he can dictate the flow of a game in a pro-style offense, uh, playing with offensive linemen that are 6'5 in front of him and are bigger than most NFL linemen that he could possibly play for. And he really made a jump this year, I think, in a lot of NFL camps uh, because of that. I think Jeff gradually, and then also once, if somebody comes and watches him, you guys have seen it firsthand, the composure, uh, the, the work ethic. Uh, he got invited to that senior bowl and I gave it to him. I go, buddy, whoever the other two quarterbacks on your side are, they're not going to enjoy you being there because you're, you're going to do things in such a way that I haven't seen other people practice at that my guess is he'll make a huge jump in that week. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, um, we had a conversation with me, him and his mom and dad. Um, we make a little comments all the time. I mean, at the, com at the uh, award ceremony on Thursday night, you know, I said right away at the Doak, it would be great to win it next year. Uh, you know, the Heisman, great to come back, L little things like that. And his mom and dad have enjoyed, I think, the process as well. But I think the running backs are a little bit different um, than, than offensive linemen. Offensive linemen, you can talk about an extended career, the, just the cold hard facts of NFL careers for running backs is shorter. And I totally get, um, you know that perspective. Um, for Monty, I'd say a first, a second is a nice discussion. You know, and third would be something that would be advisable. But again, it's I'm going to leave it up to the people that are in the room to give me the advice to give to Monty. Yep. Just kind of looking up there. I, I think every game was hard for Chris last year, and for him to get uh, recognized this year, um, uh, both uh, with the coaches and, and, the, and the media from all Big Ten, speaks volumes. Um, he really grew so much during the course of the year. He'd never played inside linebacker, so um, I know it was a common discussion in those first three, four, five games. Why isn't Borland outside? I mean, it, you, you really see the emergence of a middle linebacker that uh, is exceptional, and the great thing is he's got two more years, hopefully.